Welcome as we continue our journey through the Word of God. Today we're going to be starting a journey through 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's the final chapter in Paul's first letter to Timothy. 1 and 2 Timothy, the last letters we have from the Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy, he's about to write it from a Roman prison where he's soon to be executed. The tone of 2 Timothy is different than 1 Timothy. Uh, 1 Timothy is written to Timothy as he leads the church in Ephesus. He's, it's, been, it's equipping Timothy with so much. It's all about equipment and inspiration and encouragement. But also a challenge for Timothy, make sure you do these certain things. And in Paul's final chapter of 1 Timothy, he's going to talk about many things but about how easy it is to be swayed away from the truth and that we are really meant to have the position of being slaves in a positive sense in that we trust our master, not endorsing the concept of slavery in a human way, the way that we've seen it uh, you know, exhibited in mankind, but from a true bond servant, as the Bible calls it, to understanding that it's somebody you are you you owe a debt to you uh, you are uh, choosing to be their servant and you know that they benevolently will take care of everything that you need and they only have your best interests at heart so it takes away the sin nature of man when it comes to abuse and those kind of things so let's get on to first Timothy chapter 6 verse 1 let as many bond servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blessed, blasphemed. Paul says, slaves, count your own masters worthy of all honor. Be a good, respectful worker for your master. So he's applying this principle uh, across the spectrum of Christ-believing people. Now, it wasn't the Apostle Paul trying to tell Timothy, hey, the institution of slavery is a really good idea. But it was all about how the, the, the only true form of being a, uh, a slave from a God perspective is understanding that God is the ultimate benevolent master and that he would always be glorified so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. Now, when we say we're as are under the yoke, then what that means is let as many bond servants as are under the yoke. These principles apply to whenever we put ourselves under a yoke, which includes in our jobs today. Uh, when we work hard, we honor our employers. And when we do that, it glorifies God, even if they're not God glorifying people. But when we're a bad worker, when we're disrespectful to our leaders and our supervisors, what does that do? It, it brings shame on the name of Jesus Christ. This is a blunt reality for us. Guzik says this, Colossians 3, verses 22 to 24, gives the sense of this. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So, no matter who we work for, we really work for Jesus and we should give glory to God and give him honor through actually doing a hard day's work every day we go to work so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. People unfortunately will judge Christianity based on what kind of worker you are. Who God is, the name of God, what the Bible teaches, his doctrines. They, they will judge that based on how you conduct yourself as an employee. This, this is the principle. Paul's trying to teach Timothy to teach the church at Ephesus. Every Christian has to ask, ask themselves a very important question. Are you leading people to Jesus by the way you work, or are you leading people away from Jesus by your example at work? How you speak at work, does that lead people to Jesus, or does it lead people away from Jesus? Very practical teaching from Paul to Timothy about the, the church in Ephesus, which, by the way, the church in Ephesus didn't listen to uh, and didn't pick up all the things that uh, Timothy was trying to teach them after being taught by Paul. So we go on to verse 2. 
And those who have believing masters, those who people who have masters who are Christ followers, let them not despise them because they are brethren, brothers in Christ, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things, Timothy. So maybe slaves in those days in Ephesus, where Timothy's leading the church, would say, well, listen, my master doesn't know Jesus. So he asked me to work way too hard. Or conversely, maybe a slave said, well, uh, my master's a Christian uh, and so he's now my brother, so he shouldn't be asking me to work so hard. And he should be showing me Christian love and, and compassion and leniency and maybe a little bit of favor above those other slaves that aren't Christians because I'm a Christian too and we're brothers. He should be looking after me more than the others. Let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them. Uh, okay. Imagine if a slave said, listen, we're equal before the Lord because we're both Christians. You've got no right to tell me what to do. Then that would totally ignore the fact that God calls us into a lot of relationships where submission is something that we are commanded to do, come under the mission commandment. The Bible says that we are to have submission in the home, in the church, in the workplace. So it's a Bible command. We don't like it, of course. It's very unpopular and also, you know, not a very attractive thing. People are like, well, what's submit? I'm not a doormat. No, but biblical submission has nothing to do with that. Biblical submission is about coming under a mission, an established God-ordained mission. That's all. Guzik says this, a great quote, I love this, our equality in Jesus doesn't eliminate God's order of authority. Our equality in Jesus doesn't eliminate God's order of authority. I really like that. That's a, that's a great quote. But what are we meant to do? If you're if you're a you know employee and you've got a boss who's a Christian, what are we meant to do? Serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. So Christian workers with Christian bosses were not free to despise their masters for expecting the work. Now, the terminology used here is slaves and masters because that was how the employee relationship really was. You, you were a slave. Uh, but in a, in, in a sense where there was benefits associated, not just necessarily the way we think of a, a slave. Um, and it wasn't okay for you to say, well, because you're, I'm a Christian, you're a Christian, you can't ask me to work hard. No. Uh, I, I think the point here that Paul's trying to teach Timothy is that if you work for somebody and they're a Christian and you're a Christian, you should work even harder because you're serving a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ. We, we should never expect special treatment from somebody because they're a Christian. That should motivate us to actually do more because then you can be a blessing to somebody else. Uh, Guzik actually recounts a story here to demonstrate this. And it's a story from Warren Wearsby. Uh, and, and I'm just going to read it to you. Warren Wisby relates the story of a young lady who had left a secular job to work for a Christian organization. She had been there about a month and was really disillusioned. I thought it was going to be heaven on earth, she complained. Instead, there's nothing but problems. Wisby asked her if she was working just as hard for her new boss as she did in her old secular job. The look on her face said no. So Wisby told her, try working harder and show your boss real respect. Just because all you in the office are saved doesn't mean that you can do less than your best. She took his advice and the problems cleared up. Just a great practical example. Teach and exhort these things, Timothy. Uh, Paul's saying to Timothy, this teaching is incredibly important and it's not just going to be important, Timothy, in the world you're in, which now is an ancient world to us, but it was modern day world then, but it's also applicable to us in our modern day where we, you know, slaves were treated different from master to master, no different than employees are, are treated differently from employer to employer. And there was a lot of racism. There was a lot of hatred between slaves and masters back then, no different than there is now, today. Uh, you have to understand, when Christianity 
just exploded after Jesus ascended into heaven. It was in a culture where slavery was common. There were about 60 million slaves in the Roman Empire alone. And what was interesting is we, we don't have a concept of how it worked, but there were slaves who had very highly esteemed and privileged positions. But then there were other slaves who were treated with horrible, disgusting abuse. Just because you were a slave didn't mean that life was bad for you. And Paul says to Timothy, listen, we're not calling for a violent revolt against slavery, which is very interesting, uh, and the institution of slavery. What Paul was saying is through the gospel message of Jesus Christ, you can destroy the foundations of slavery, racism, greed, hatred of different classes, and you can actually make a civilization without all those things possible. Now, interesting observation from Guzik. The church itself was a place where slavery was destroyed. It was not uncommon for a master and a slave to go to church together, where the slave would be an elder in the church, and the master was expected to submit to the slave's spiritual leadership. Such radical thinking was an offense to many, but glorified God and eventually destroyed slavery. So you can imagine that. This is what's happening in the early church in, in Ephesus. You got slaves who work for their masters, have to work really hard, you know, during the week. Then and the church, that they, they held a position of spiritual authority over their master. And their master was expected to come under their spiritual mission, submit. Can you imagine like how like mind-blowing that would have been for those people? Be like, oh my goodness, I don't know how to do it. Now that's no different than today. When you you might uh, be a Christ follower and have a uh, a boss who who doesn't know Jesus, doesn't love Jesus, and you invite them to church and they find Jesus and get saved, and then they're now being invited to a small group that you lead. So on a Tuesday night, you're their spiritual leader. Monday to Friday during the week, they're your boss. No different. Now, what it did was it actually ended up back in that particular time really just pulling apart all the, the negative parts of slavery. And that's why we don't use those terms now for an employer uh, and employee relationship. Although I'm sure some of you feel like if you're an employee, you are a slave and you have a master. But the point is, and, and this is, leads us to our observation today that Paul was trying to get across to, to Timothy, is it doesn't matter where you sit on the totem pole, eventually you have to become a slave to Christ. What does that mean? He asks you to do something, you do it because you know it's always for your benefit and you always work your hardest for Jesus and you do whatever Jesus asks you to do and you don't complain and you get about honoring and glorifying Jesus through your work ethic. This is the point. Now, what do you observe out of this today? A lot in this today. Uh, love to know what you get out of it. I, I've kind of shared some thoughts with you along the way. Tell me in the comments below. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can trust you when you give us commands that whatever command you give us is going to be for our benefit and for your eternal purposes. And so God, I, I pray, Lord, that even if we can't see how things are for our benefit, even if it looks like things you're asking us to do actually bring us into harmful situations, we understand, God, that you look through the lens of eternity, not through the lens of just our time here on this planet. You're thinking about our eternal benefit, not our temporal benefit. God, I pray, Lord, that for many people today who are just watching this, encourage them, God, that even if you're asking them to step into the fire, you're asking them to do that because it's the right thing to do for eternity. God, I pray, Lord, that whatever we do with our uh, work situations, that we would always honor Jesus with our, with our work ethic every single day. In Jesus' name, amen.